So I'm about to go continue working on the engine, but before I get onto that, I wanted to mention that what you're going to see next is actually jumping backwards in time a couple of days. Um, my friend Amy was back. You're going to see her in the video. She's a little bit camera shy, so you won't see much of her, which I totally understand. Um, given that she was here and willing to help, I didn't want to spend a lot of time worrying about camera setup. I haven't, as I record this to you right now, I haven't looked at the footage yet, so there might not be a whole lot usable. So allow me to explain what we're doing. The goal was to drain the diesel tank. But when we got into there, we realized that all of the hoses were in the way. And I was going to have to replace them anyway, because as I found on some of the dates on them, when I pulled them hoses off, they were from the mid to late nineties. So we ended up spending the day taking all of the hoses off and then making a run to West Marine to try to find replacements. And I learned just how expensive those cable or those cables, those hoses are. Now, to be fair, West Marine is the convenience store of the Marine world. So you pay a bit of a, you get it now penalty, but still. Once we got all the hoses off, um, we put one hose back on right away, which I didn't film, which was the main cooling line that goes from the seacock to the sea strainer. I had to put that on right away because when we took it off, I noticed that it was leaking even with the seacock closed. It wasn't leaking a lot, but I also didn't want to leave the boat with, with something I knew was leaking because as unlikely it was, as it was to completely fail, I, I just, yeah, didn't feel comfortable with that. So we got that hose on. All of the other hoses still need to be reapplied. Before I get to that though, I'm going to try to drain the diesel tank. I realized when Amy was here that even forward of the engine, I, there, there's not enough of a height difference between the bottom of the diesel tank and the, the sole of the, well, the sole of the boat to get a proper gravity siphon going. So I'm going to have to use some sort of a pump. I bought a pump type thing, I don't know what the proper name is, for pulling the engine oil out to do an engine change. An engine change, an engine oil change. The engine change is coming later. I'm going to take that apart and clean out the inside. And what I'm hoping I can do is use that to pump diesel out of the tank into that holding thing. And then I'll pour it into the filter funnel into the jerry can and then take that off and start to pour it off. So that's what's up next for me. But for you, let's jump backwards in time a little bit. There's no audio for the next 24 seconds, so I'll quickly show hoses being removed. I hate GoPro so much. Removing the heat exchanger coolant to engine lower aft. Coolant draining into the container, because, you know, being nice to the environment. Removing the heat exchanger raw water out to the wet exhaust. Removing the heat exchanger coolant to the engine block. No, you can't see that. Oh, the diesel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. That is not happy. Valve. One of the things the uh, surveyor flagged when I was looking at buying the boat was the heat exchanger. Really? What do you say about it? Corrosion? Yeah. That's what I think. And I'm like, yep, I know. But again, when I bought it, I was planning to just put it on a truck, which, you know, would still be far more sensible, but not nearly as fun. This hose. I'm gonna try to put labels on things because the hoses are already labeled, so. <sighs> oh, I wish I still had Joe's picks. Is this going to the raw water? No, that's going to the engine. In that's the yeah, coolant the intake. Raw water, water, raw water out to, this comes down. Oh, is that into the impeller? Yeah, this is the impeller. Ah, that's the impeller. Okay, so that's gonna be fresh water. I don't need to worry about. This is the raw water pump in. This goes out to the heat exchanger. Okay, these ones I don't care. I'm just gonna cut the damn thing. There we go. It's a lot easier when you don't mind damaging things. motors and boat bilges <laughs> <laughs> and this boat was noted for being hard to work on they were not lying do you want to just take the knife and cutter no <laughs> it's a challenge oh okay challenge accepted. i can appreciate that logic <laughs> this is impeller output to coolant or to heat exchanger right yes so this goes this is raw water going to the heat exchanger raw water to heat exchanger is she rotating at all on your end no 
Yeah, I don't want to break the, the metal parts. I'd rather just cut it if it's a risk. Pums, I think some of these hoses have been on here so long they've become part of the body. Oh, entirely. That's why I had to fight so hard to get the diesel fuel filler neck off. All right, give it a twist. Let's just cut it. I don't want to risk breaking the brass piece. I appreciate the... You're still going to have to fight it off. Yeah. Well, once you cut it, um, you can, like, split it. When I did this one, it wasn't budging. As soon as I slid it, I was able to snap it right off. Give her a good... need a couple of cuts to get all the way through. Ow. She's baked on. Ah, we win. Okay, is that one labeled? What did we win, though? It is. I cut through the label, but it is labeled. Okay, so this one's good. I'm going to put that... I mean, it's very much not good, but it's clear. <laughs> Sharp little thing. Do you want to give me the knife? <laughs> I can get a good... Mouth, <laughs> don't worry about it. I, I can bleep. Yeah, well, yeah so what I'm worried about is I, I don't want to break the <laughs> metal mount back here. So see how much this is moving? Yeah. I'd rather just cut it and be safe. Pass me the knife. I can get a good angle on it here going I down think like I that. Can. You can as well? Okay. Yeah, None of these hoses are going back on, so I don't care about saving any of them. I care about saving I, the hardware. Yeah, I this one to move a little bit. Did you? Yeah. Cut. Oh, boy, that one's being tough. It's probably got metal lining in it. Movers. Let's oh. that one. Right. Okay, yep, is that coolant? No, that's going no, that's, to the C strainer. Oh, that is disgusting. I'll see that. So much fun. <laughs> Never complain about a situation you got yourself into. I am, uh, I don't know. I'm telling myself that many times. Well, see, you chose. I work for or, boat work. I like it. <laughs> you know, the thing is, is as miserable as this is, it's still satisfying. You know, like in a way that I think a lot of. I mean, people watching this channel probably get it, but a lot of people, there's a pleasure in fighting something, not because of the fight, because of how fucking good it feels when you when you win. Challenge accepted, that sort of thing. Yes, yeah. exactly. In case anyone's ever wondering why I always have uh, cuts and bruises. Maybe you can reach it better than I can. It's not that I can reach it better than you, it's that I can see the slot. Yeah, that should be enough for the spin. Okay. Oh, you can see those wires. Ugh, so much to do. I have no idea if this is going to be at all usable footage, but I'm going to try my best for you. <laughs> Working in this boat it leaves really no good place to film. You can see this is going into the tank now, and I'm going to try to suck it into here. Wow, just a few pumps and it's already almost full. You know what might actually be easier is to leave that in the tank and take, oops, and take this out. Is it siphoning? Ha, huh, it's siphoning. <laughs> okay, so the tank is really full. I have to take the uh, end out. There it goes. Man, trying to do this without making a huge mess is going to be a challenge. Broke the seal. Put that back up there. Where can I, where can I put this? It's not gonna flop about. I really don't know what the diesel's gonna do to this camera. I hope I don't damage it as much as I bitch about it. So you can see how it's filtering. Can you see how it's filtering? Now I'm getting the top of the tank, so I don't expect there to be a lot of debris at first. It'll get messy towards the end. The filter ends fairly high up the bottom of the funnel, so there's a certain amount that's just not going to get drained. 
where did I put the paper towel? How do I lose the paper towel so fast? All right. I'm gonna try a bunch of different camera angles here and see which one turns out to actually be useful. Break the siphon, lift this off, drip as much of it back into the canister as I can, be mindful of the waterways, and repeat. Is there a... Ah, I was hoping there was a strip that would give me an idea of when she was getting full. I know this is five gallons. I don't know how much this is. I don't want that to fall. I'm gonna put it back here so that the funnel can't fall because it's being held up by this. I, I really need to find the paper towel. I'm gonna go through a lot of it, keeping drips from getting into the seaway or waterway. What the hell did I do with it? I just had the whole roll. Oh, there it is. All right. This is gonna be a long process. But it's working. I should mention too, for anyone who's concerned, the bilge goes down like this and then it comes up and goes back down again towards the front. So there's an area where any oils that drip will gather that I can wipe up with a towel before they get all the way into the bilge to keep them from being pumped overboard. I'm doing my absolute best to make sure nothing gets into the waterways. Oh, I think I can see the water or the water line. Yes, I can see the diesel. I've got a long way to go. This is just one. I'm probably gonna have to do, what's 30 divided by five, six of these. Oh, this is gonna take a while. And that was the third of this. I don't know how many times I'm gonna have to fill up the little blue thing for each time I uh, fill up the five gallon. Okay, uh, complaining does nothing. Stop complaining. Y'all got the gist of it. I'm gonna turn off the camera, save the battery, save the footage, put on some music. I'll bring you back when I hit a milestone. All right, so this is the third of the five gallons. And it's also, it's about the limit of sitting in the lazarette and getting the hose in, because the hose is going in at an angle. And even though it's only 15 gallons out, it's uh, missing, like it's, it's just not reaching to the bottom. So what I'm going to do is, being the 15 gallons, or the, the 15, the third five gallon barrel, the halfway mark. Sorry, I'm tired. <laughs> Climbing up and down to the lazarette a lot is, a lot of work. Anyways, being the halfway mark, I'm gonna go get the bio side and take this to the drum. It's close to where people are working, so I don't wanna take the camera. Yes, yeah, so I'll pour in the bio side, then empty this in, and then when I come back, I'll set up again and you'll see, I'm gonna to try to take the sender out because then I can run the hose straight down and I should be able to get the second half of the tank. <sighs> but work. I was about to turn off the camera and I remember, realized I can pour this right into the jerry can and then take it off and drop it. So that's what I'll do. At the halfway mark, I'm already seeing a lot of debris that this filter is catching. Oh God, this biocide smells like gas. This will get nicely jostled up inside the jerry can on the way to the barrel. By the way, they've got this weird like lock and spring thing. I really don't like that at all. Anyways, anyways, ooh, flying hair. I'm gonna go drop this one off and uh, come back and pull the sender off the tank. <laughs> Hello from under the cockpit. Uh, actually, more specifically, from the lazarette, you're in the quarter berth access panel. So I can't siphon any more out. So, oh, this is so damn awkward. So right here, right here, Oh, balls. So right here is the diesel pickup, and that's seen better days. That's threaded in, and I don't want to try to unthread it. Not yet, anyway. This is the tank level sender, which I didn't even know I had and probably doesn't work. Ah, you know what? I'm going to have to pull this bung out before I try to remove the tank, because I'm just going to hook it on things. Well, we'll see. Anyways, back here, which I know you can't see very well, I'm sorry. There's this wire that goes to the sender, and there's five? Looks like five screws holding it in and a really worn gasket. Oh, that's the other thing. If I take that off, the gasket... Well, you know what? Shit's going to fall inside of it anyway. It doesn't matter. I'm going to try to take this off and then get the siphon hose down here. I don't know how hard that's going to be. 
Okay, I gotta figure this out. This is this is gonna be tight. I'm going to be using the return of the angle tool. This thing is proving incredibly useful. Oh, this 90 degree tool is the best thing ever. Well, I say that until I am happy about something else and say that's the best thing ever. You know what's gonna get me in trouble getting this tank out? Are these uh, steering wheels. They may actually make it almost impossible to get it out with the steering. Oh shit, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I may have to take these off, which means I have to take the steering apart. Oh boy. Well, one shit show at a time. Oh shit, this is awkward. Ah, be a f***ing contortionist to work on this boat. Oh, balls. It may simply come to pass that I have no choice but to leave the tank in place until I get home. In which case, I, uh, I'm gonna have to think about how to clean as much of the shit out as I can and just hope my filters are up to the task of whatever's left. Got it. Oh, this sender's a float switch. Okay, I need to get that off. I'll probably re-terminate this wire at the same time just to be safe for the trip home. I'll bring you around to show you what I'm doing. So that's the sender. You can see how the float goes down into there. Maybe you can, maybe you can't, I don't know. But I gotta get that wire off first. You know, I could really just go and get my socket set. That would be the wise thing to do now, wouldn't it? But why do something the easy way when you can do it the hard way? Okay, is there voltage on that? Put that back there for a second. Ground on the ground strap. 0.4 volts. I don't think it's very much, but I'm gonna tape it anyway, just to be safe. There we go. Um, okay, how do I get this out? I'm bending this rod, which means the float's no longer accurate, but I don't care. There. Yeah, just a cork float. Okay. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a potentiometer. As the float goes up, it uh, changes the resistance. And that gasket seems not entirely perished, so I can probably clean it and use it for the trip home. For now, I'm gonna put it right back up there because it's gonna have to get cleaned anyway. So now, this old hose, I wanna clear this out, and as you can see, it's very broken. So I'm gonna actually climb in the other side, cut it, and pull the crap out. Pull the crap out, pull the broken part out. Obviously this blower hose has to be replaced anyway. And I will be putting the blower hose back because technically the gas, if the battery is over pressure, is flammable. But I'll deal with that later. So now I've got an open space here. I gotta take that off. If I take that off, that's gonna completely free this space. And I'm gonna have to buy another, more of this hose, which sucks because that shit's expensive. I'm gonna have to take the whole quadrant off. I don't think I can get this tank out. If I take this block here off, take this off i might be able to tilt that up and pull it forward oh fuck i've got a lot of work to do so very much work to do now the trick is to get this down here so i'm going to take this off now seems like the time to do it i'm going to go get my socket set get this completely out of the way and that's going to make it easier to get the hose down into the hole okay that's going to take me a bit of work i'm going to turn off the camera for a bit all right before i do anything else i'm taking this hook off because it is going to rip my pants off i will put it back later i should also mention i've got somebody who's offered to come over and help me pretty much any minute now and when he shows up I suspect he's going to be camera shy, so I'm probably just going to turn off the camera. Oh, ooh, 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 don't lose those bolts. Don't lose those bolts. Um, what I was saying was, when he shows up, I'll probably just turn off the camera. If that happens, I'll show you what's done when it's done. But I'll say ahead of time, the plan, that's the heat exchanger. That's going to come off. That is probably going to drip coolant, so I should grab a can to get ready to catch it. Before I bought this boat, I was warned that the engine access was one of the... Very few complaints about the landfall. Oh, 
those were not in the stated. I'll show you what's going on. So the problem is this here sticks back so far that if I put this properly on, I can't get it all the way in. So what I'm going to do is put that on and then just get enough of the, oh, actually, oh, god damn it. Okay, well I can do it by hand, so you can see what I'm doing here. It's like seven degrees Celsius out and windy. Trying to get your fingers to do what you want them to when they're this cold. It's not going well. Ugh. Okay, all well, that worked. Now this should, in theory, just come off. And that seems to be exactly what's about to happen. This is gonna leak, but I have something down there to catch it now. So I'm gonna take this off. Oh wow, this is a lot heavier than I expected. Okay, the top one's just seawater. I don't care about that. Oh, that's why the, sea, the heat exchanger is so heavy. Actually, I don't see any antifreeze in that. I think I got, oh, there's the glycol. Okay. One freshly liberated heat exchanger. Now I gotta take these off so I can hopefully tilt this back and pull it forward. What I can do though, is put these back on now so I don't lose them. Half inch. Hey, how's it going? So that was the yard mechanic, Joe, who's been really kind in helping me out by lending me the, the hooks you saw when I was pulling the hose off. Him and I were just chatting for a bit about my predicament and trying to get this tank removed. He saw the bulkhead that was in the way and uh, his view is that it's probably not coming out without something being damaged or destroyed. So I've got 15 gallons out plus a little bit before I ran out and he said to leave the rest of it in there. He might have access to a machine that will circulate it. So I may end up using the diesel that I have left in there to circulate through the tank a bunch of times, hooked up to a proper Raycor filter, and to try to flush the tank out that way with the tank staying in the boat. So I am going to take those two pieces out that the heat exchanger was connected to because I'm probably going to want to get them out of the way anyway. Well, do I want to do that or do I want to just leave it now? You know what? I might just leave them for tonight because if I don't have to take them off, if I'm not taking the tank out, why risk them getting loose and whatever on the trip home? I think I'm stopping for the night. So the yard mechanic, had hoped that he would have access to a polisher that would help me clean the tank without actually removing the tank from the boat. Unfortunately, he doesn't have that, so I'm back to pulling the rest of it out. Before I do that, though, one of the other things he told me about was tying off the lazarette hatch. The reason for that being that he actually had a, a situation where he was working in a boat in the evening by himself in October, and the wind closed the lazarette hatch and it was one of the kinds that latches when it closes he told me how he got out and uh let's say just say it wasn't it wasn't it didn't sound like fun so yeah pro tip from an actual pro tie off your lazarette hatches when you're working inside the boat so yeah let's uh let's get back to it oh there she goes now i'll get the other one out i should get my gloves she says, and then doesn't get her gloves. There. The reason I'm doing this is when I take these off, I'm hoping I can lift the tank. This is what's going to block me. This is the wheel that diverts the wire from the binnacle to the quadrant. That's about the midway, so I'm going to have to hope I can tilt it back and pull it forward without having to cut this bulkhead. I mean, I'm not going to cut this bulkhead. It's I don't know how structural it is, and I don't have time to figure it out. Ugh, what a shit shell. I have to admit, I'm uh, not in the best mood today. It's been a lot. It's been a lot. For now, I've cleared this area so I can get back to pumping the diesel out. I'm going to go get some gloves before I do that, though, because diesel's kind of nasty. Fourth bucket, 20 gallons. Ouch. I've got five of the jerry cans done. So about the better part of 25 gallons is done. So in theory, 
this should be the last one I have to do. So far, I've seen some black scum come up, but not as much as I expected. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get in and take the last one out and, and stick the camera down there and see where we are. I forgot my gloves. One exam, please. The GoPro lost audio again. I was using the cart to get, take the five gallon diesel to the barrel and back. It was a fair bit of a walk. This is draining the Raycor filter where the sludge was and using the bulb to get the last out of the tank. I have been having no end of problems with this GoPro. I've had significant audio problems recording with this thing. Anyways, really quick recap, because I'm sure I found a way to use some of the footage. The diesel is empty. I was able to squeeze the bulb and it's just sucking air. I only got a little bit of uh, black slime out. I was stirring it up with the hose that I was using to suck the diesel out. Got a lot of particulate debris, but nothing too terribly serious. While I was dumping the diesel into the barrel that the uh, yard lads are letting me use, I was speaking to them and I'm like, yeah, you know, maybe it's not that bad. And they were saying, that the previous owner had paid them every year to come in and winterize the thing per properly and that included always putting I called it biocide I think there was like stable stable light or something like that I can't remember the name right now but in a moment I'm going to know for sure but I figured I'd give this heads up before I actually find out so we can figure it out together I might be not entirely screwed on this tank I cannot get this tank out. The steering gear and the quadrant are in the way. I've got a bulkhead forward. Getting this thing out is going to be a big job. So if this is messy, I don't know what to do next. Let's uh, let's see if it's messy. So for, sorry, it's very cramped quarters because, well, I'm in very cramped quarters. For another job I had back on my house, back before I started the YouTube channel, I had to pick up a laparoscopic camera. I haven't used it in a very long time. I do periodically go in and charge these things every couple months to make sure the battery doesn't go so flat that it doesn't wake up again. Let's see if this thing is alive. You can see the lights on the end of the camera, so that's a good sign. There we go. So you guys can see what I see. You can see this is what I'm doing. Let's see if I can figure out a way to put this camera. Take the GoPro right out of the mount, set you like that. I think that's as good as anything. Oh, balls. Selfie. That is right side up. <laughs> it's not the highest resolution or frame rate, but that's okay. All right, let's see. You know, all things considered, I'm seeing metal. Making sure I'm not looking out the wall. Ah, damn it. Ah, come on. My kingdom for a stable light. Oh wait, I don't have a kingdom. So I guess I don't have a stable light. Okay, that's the wall. Can't see shit. Is that the pickup tube? Yes, that's the pickup tube. That is not bad at all. Holy shit. <laughs> that. is a baffle and that is an entirely tolerable amount of shit any of that breaking free the filters will deal with <sighs> um holy shit i uh I'm not fucked. <laughs> when I realized the tank wasn't coming out, I, uh, I was imagining I was in for a lot of shit. And uh, for the record, it's like February 8th or something like that now. So I've got less than two months. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna stop now and celebrate tomorrow after work I'm gonna put the uh, sender back and start putting things back together <sighs> I'm gonna stop here because um, I might be feeling a little bit emotional and relieved right now <laughs> oh my god I thought I was so fucked I'm the digital mermaid um, I guess this was the disassembly episode <sighs> 
Yes! <laughs> ah! Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's gonna be alright. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Ardmore? Writer's Tears? No. Tonight, it's a Talisker's. It's a plastic cup. It's a block of ice. It ain't fancy, but it gets the job done. That'll do, little pig. My diesel tank? It's entirely within tolerable levels of fucked. And I am so relieved. Oh, fuck. That has been stressing me out. That has been stressing me out something fierce. Start putting this boat back together and get ready to get home. Prost.